Hey guys, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the first album in 10 years from Death From Above 1979, a Canadian noise rock slash dance punk duo that formed in the early 2000s, put out a kind of a cult classic album, You're a Woman, I'm a Machine. I never got around to listening to that. I honestly never even heard of them until the release of the single Trainwreck 1979. But this new album is called The Physical World, and that single really made me interested in this band. I think what really works about this band, after going back and checking out that debut album, is just the combination that they seem to have. The chemistry that flows between the bass and the drums. They only have two members, like I said. You got Jesse doing the synths and handling all of the bass work, and then you have Sebastian on vocals and drums, and that always impresses me whenever someone can handle something like that. This album is filled to the brim with catchy and infectious riffs, some of them more angsty and angry than others. You got that lead single, Trainwreck 1979, which seemed to piss some fans off just because of the fact that it feels a lot more polished, and overall, honestly, I gotta say that I'm more of a fan of this polished sound, if that's what you call polished. This is still very abrasive in your face all throughout this album. Dance punk, dance rock, honestly. Music that just really pushes the limits of what a rock band can do these days. Most people are kind of like pushing the guitars and the bass kind of to the back burner and focusing more on like the synthesizers, the electronics, and of course now everyone wants this 80s feel. Death from Above 1979 are daring to put this at the forefront of their music and just be really brash about the way that they get their music to you, and honestly, it pleases me to no end. All throughout this record, there's a certain groove that goes on, it never really breaks out of it, and it's honestly one of my favorite albums of the year so far. Eleven tracks, chocked full of all of this bass work that really feels, like I said, very infectious, but at the same time, very intricate. You're going to get into songs like Government Trash and Gemini, and there's all of these really cool and like odd parts that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be in one of their songs or really just a rock song period, but they make it work. Government Trash, that one that I just mentioned, is one of the most blatantly in-your-face kick-ass songs on this record. It's one of the only ones that are really the only one that has any kind of screaming on it, kind of reminiscent of that first record. So you know what that means. A lot of the longtime fans are going to be latching on to this song in particular. Yes, it is my favorite song on this album, but there's so many things about it that make it work. It does have kind of a buildup in its first minute. There are some angsty moments in there, but it really just explodes after the one minute mark. We start hearing those screams, the bass just gets out of control, the drumming picks up, the song just kicks ass. The album starts off with the track Cheap Talk, and it kicks things off in kind of a noisy fury that has lead singer slash drummer Sebastian Granger doing one of the things that he does best and kind of pushing those drums and those bright melodies. It's got a really punchy bass line on it as well. The drums slam it out and make this a really fun start to the physical world. Next up is Right On Frankenstein that follows it up. I'm not exactly really hooking onto the vocals that much, but everything else about this works. I really like the instrumentation on this one and it has one of the most infectious bass melodies on the entire album. I can't help but love the cockiness of the track always on, especially when the music surrounding the vocals backs it up with such a strong showing. The backing vocals really have to be commended on this cut as well, popping up here and there and really adding a little bit of extra flair to this energetic cut that could easily be one of my top favorites on the album. Gemini is a track that's quite the trip, throwing in all these loopy synthesizers that really bring this feeling of being like lost in another dimension almost. I'd be a little bit shocked and disappointed if this song doesn't find its way onto the set list for their upcoming tour. I absolutely love the guitar melody on the track Crystal Ball. It sets things on such a stable course throughout its almost three minute run here on this one. The vocals on it drag a little bit at times, but honestly, it still feels like it's going to be one of my favorites on this record in the long run. I think the track, The Physical World, the title track, is another one that's very experimental, but also kind of in a cool way. At first, I didn't like the fact that this big building synth that starts off the song almost sounding like something kind of straight out of a video game. It just kind of crashes into a wall of guitars, and I still don't think that that flows that well. 
but honestly the rest of this track kind of makes up for that. Nothing Left and Virgins are two of my least favorites here on this album. I think the reason Virgins doesn't quite click with me, just because there's not enough substance there to really make a memorable track. Sure, it's kind of got that dark feel about it, a little bit of cynicism that feels like something maybe off of the most recent Queens of the Stone Age record, but that only works for so long. It only powers a little bit of the instrumentation. Things slow down a little bit on the track White is Red, and it tells the story of young heartache. Sure, we've heard it before, but it's a welcome sonic change in the record, definitely a major shift in sound, but it somehow doesn't feel out of place. The vocals do feel a little bit flat and obviously more restrained here, but the chorus does a solid job of delivering a more poignant performance that really captures the listener's ear. All in all, I'm very, very blown away by this record. I was not expecting really that much at all. I liked the lead single, Trainwreck 1979, a whole lot, but I didn't know an entire album could be this good from these guys. Trainwreck 1979 is one of the better tracks, but there's even ones that top that, like Government Trash, Gemini, and probably even Crystal Ball, honestly. Overall, for this record, for me, I'm feeling a 4.5 out of 5. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have not heard of these guys, so if you would like to check them out, link in the description down below, along with my Facebook, Twitter. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video. I'd really appreciate it if you share this one out, because, of course, probably not a lot of people know about this band, and honestly, this is a cool record that I think a lot of people would like. So make sure to share it around, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you very soon right here on ARTV. I have a lot of reviews on the way, so keep checking back right here on ARTV, Beyond the Reviews.